right have and have not fans this video is going to be covering the question that Jim asked Candace at the end of the teaser trailer in regards to I know you have nothing so tell me was it worth it so keep in mind that this question is going to be something that I'm pretty sure Candace is going to have a sarcastic answer to the reason being that at this point Jim knows about the whole foreclosure on the houses and the tow company due to the fact Candace wasn't able to pay back the bank the two million excuse me the two million dollar loan that I believe it was a uh, Lloyd the banker uh, Jim gave him the thumbs up to do it because of the contract breach that he put in there I believe it was the uh, the balloon in there where he's like hey if she doesn't pay back by such and such a date then she is not going to have anything left they're going to take her for everything she's got and they did so. Jim is going to be a bit cocky when he asked a question because remember, he was trying to get on the DA's good side because the DA was like, hey, can you arrange a meeting with Candace and to extort any information that she might have about Quincy Maxwell's death due to the fact that if Jim does comply that he has the pictures and videos of the war room, you know, all the transvestites and whatnot that were taking pictures with Jim as blackmail. He has those, so Jim was pretty screwed, uh, excuse me, screwed if he didn't do what he was told. And uh, <laughs> he probably thinks that Candace doesn't have a leg to th stand on at this point, but he doesn't know that she's messing around with the potential president. And I, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm tongue tied just thinking about it because, again, it goes to the fact that Jim thinks that he has Candace right where she, well, excuse me, right where he wants her, but she's bounced back. And she's, I mean, literally, she has went from gangbangers, pimps, judges, slash um, potential government, governor candidates to the freaking potential next president of the United States. So that says a lot. And even in the trailer, we see that she has a bag full of money that she's going through. And Oscar says, hey, this is like billions of dollars we're talking about here. So you don't know what to do with that kind of money. Like, honestly, she doesn't. Candace is a pro at what she does, but this is a new level. This is a new ball game. So there's no telling what she's going to do at this level. Not to mention, I fear that if you notice something, a trend with Candace, every time she gets out of one debacle after the next, you know, the Malones, you know, Quincy and what have you, she loses a lot more each time. Remember with Quincy, she thought she lost her son when she lied to him about killing him. But it turns out he was with Quita the whole time. Then after the Home Alone situation, she lost everything in her apartment. She literally had nothing to her name. Then we get out of the Oscar situation where she literally didn't have two nickels to run to get, excuse me, two nickels to rub together. Now she's, well, unknowingly lost her son because remember, she doesn't know that um, Warlock has killed him. Because remember, she got out of that situation by... Um, taking a mortgage out on the houses and tow company. And by doing so, she paid off Warlock to $2 million. But after finding out it was $7.4 million by Jim when he was in jail, Warlock came back with a vengeance and that led to her son getting killed and almost her entire family. So again, the fact that she's messing with a, you know, again, a presidential candidate, what else does she have to lose? And again, that's a dangerous question because I really don't want to see what else she has to lose at this point. So I, when Jim asked a question, let's kind of look at the question as a whole. Because again, I'm pretty sure she doesn't know that, you know, Candace, I wouldn't even say that she's working with Oscar. More like, you know, she can't stand his guts, but she's doing what she has to do just, you know, to get money. So I'm pretty sure when Jim approaches her after seeing her at the bar, she's going to give a sarcastic answer. But at the same time, Let's kind of dissect that question. Let's let's dissect the question. Like I've already talked about everything Candace has lost up in this point, even counting pre have and have not events being, you know, uh, dealing with well, first meeting with Quincy and trying to get away from him. After those two met in episode one at the hotel, that's when everything spiraled. You know, Candace, I guess you could say, infiltrated Jim's house by being Amanda's friend. And remember, we find out that she's been studying him like a like a freaking lab rat for months, just kind of, I guess you could call it stalking, but you know, just seeing Jim outside of the, you know, Jim Cryer, we see like, you know, the time he was like helping out at like a homeless shelter over Thanksgiving or Christmas. 
And then when the cameras were gone, he even gave some money to a homeless guy. And then she knew about, you know, his history where he studied his family, hence why, you know, she kind of befriended Amanda to begin with. And the list goes on. So she's been studying him for quite some time. Then look at all the losses, all the casualties along the way. You know, the fact that Amanda, again, is I wouldn't say that it's Candace's fault that Amanda died, but at the same time, she had a hand in it. Amanda wasn't fine to begin with, but Candace kind of just take it, took it to the next level because, again, she didn't make Professor Cannon sleep with Amanda. She kind of put Amanda in that situation by trying to seduce him. And it's, again, I mean, the show itself, when you think about it, is a giant chess game because, heck, I believe the season finale of season two was called Checkmate. And that had to do with, um, dang, what was it? Oh, I believe even Catherine at the beginning of season two. Wow, this is great. Look at the beginning of season two. It was right when Candace and Amanda showed up at the crier house. And Candace was like, Amanda, you need to ask for your inheritance. No, demand it. And then Catherine even said, oh, so, okay, little girl, number nine, you want to play chess in my own house? Okay, it's your move. That actually makes sense. And then at the end of season two, Candace stole the king, <laughs> Jim Cryer, on the checkerboard when she had Warlock's crew abduct him from the house. Well, damn, Tyler Perry, great writing. I like that. So, again, the whole cat, you can call it a cat and mouse game. You can call it a check, uh, excuse me, a chess game. But either way, it's a giant game that's being played by Jim and Candace and everybody else are their own pieces of the board, if you will even though Veronica would classify herself as another queen. So, you know, hey, there might be two chess boards. We don't, everybody's playing chess when you think about it. You know, you got the Harringtons. You have Jim versus Candace. And again, the list goes on. I can just go on all day. And then you look at everything Jim has lost, you know, from his marriage to the house to his notoriety. Remember, you know, he Celine, when she got on television, that just bombed his, well, that didn't necessarily bomb. He kind of jumped back from that when he did the press conference where he was supposed to quit the running for governor. But he actually, you know, used the momentum of his depression to help him out there. Like he wasn't giving up. But being arrested on national TV wasn't really a good strong suit either. So, yeah, that probably didn't help his chances of winning. Then, man, there's just so much deception, lies, and people have been hurt with, during the conflict of these two. Given the fact that Candace is probably living on cloud nine right now, the fact that she has a potential presidential candidate, well, excuse me, she has a presidential candidate on the ropes now. She feels like, you know, there's no way she can lose. So when she says, was it worth it? I mean, when Jim asks, was it worth it? I imagine Candace will say, you know what? I wouldn't, I wouldn't change it if I could. I actually believe that. I think that when it comes down to it, Jim and Candace would not even change. They won't change themselves. They probably won't even change anything that's happened at this point because it's who they are. It's who they are. So I honestly just want to get your thoughts on this because, again, that question was a great way to close out the trailer. And because, again, between now and June 20th, it's a kind of a big question to think about. You know, look at how far everything has come from episode one to the present. Again, this is a great reason why Tyler Perry should start putting the series out on DVD so we can rewatch these epic moments unfold. Because again, when you go back and watch some of the early episodes, it's amazing to see how far some of these characters have come. Yes, they may not have changed in terms of their personalities, but just the situations they were in and where they are now, it makes a bit it makes a big difference. So I'm gonna bring this video to a close with the question that Jim asked. Do you think it was worth it? You know, if you were Candace or Jim or just being on the outside, you know, looking at the situation which we are, do you think things were worth it or not?